today we're going to walk through all the steps that it takes to set up Wi-Fi and run RepRap firmware on your Big Tree Tech SKR board. Hello everyone, Chris here, and there's a lot of Big Tree Tech boards coming out now that have support for a Wi-Fi module. Now that Wi-Fi module is intended to support RepRap firmware, so that you can use the DWC and control your 3D printer via Wi-Fi. I realize there's not a lot of great instructions out there on how to get this Wi-Fi module installed and install RepRap, so I thought we'd walk through that today. Now this is mainly going to be focused on your SKR2 and your SKR3. All those boards can run multiple types of firmware, but I think that's going to be the trend going forward, so this should help you out with a lot of different boards. So let's jump into it, we'll check out the hardware, and then we'll move to installing RepRap. So here's our SKR2. You will need to power this up with your PSU. You can't do this with just USB power. It will not give enough power to get this done. So cable up to your PSU first. On the SKR2, you have these two jumpers right here. Now, if you have them on these two pins over here, that's for this U-Disc port. I really don't use it. I've never used it much. It's for a USB flash drive. If you want to use the Wi-Fi module, you need to move these into this position. That moves the power and the serial, it's actually SPI, onto your Wi-Fi port here. So make sure they're right here for the Wi-Fi module. The Wi-Fi module we're using today is the ESP12S. This is from Big Tree Tech. There's two or three of these different ones that will work. This one's the most common you see. It's around $10. On the other side, you have the red and black headers. It just matches the red and black headers right here on the board. And the only other thing we need for this is an SD card of some kind, so we can load our firmware on it, and then we can flash it to the board. So, over to the computer. Now, I don't say this a lot, but really the easiest way to get up and going here is from the Big Tree Tech GitHub page. I usually don't like to copy this firmware because I don't know the configuration, but that's mostly because of Marlin. RepRap, it doesn't matter much. We just need the bin file that lives on the board. Your configuration is going to be done in a text file, so it's really not going to matter that much. Now we'll go ahead and get this started downloading. We can just go up here and hit download zip. But while that's happening, we're going to go over to the Team Gloomy page. TeamGloomy.github.io These are the folks that are making it happen with LPC and STM chips, so you can run RepRap on them. Now the F4 is what the SKR2 board runs right now. That's the chip, STM32 F4, and then the H7 is what the SKR3 has on it. So, the F4 chip is on a lot of different boards, and it's been stable for quite a while. That's what we're focused on today. The H7 is coming. Now, if you wanted to grab just the latest version of RepRap version 3 for your board, you would come here. I don't know exactly what version Big Tree Tech has. It's relatively current, but if you want to be on the bleeding edge, this is where you'd want to be. You can just go here to get the stable release. All you would need to do is download the bin file, we would want the Wi-Fi one, you would download this, rename it firmware.bin, put it on your SD card, and that would flash the latest firmware to your board. You would still need to do all the stuff for the Wi-Fi, which we'll walk through, but there's also a link up here and instructions on how to get that done with your Wi-Fi chip. But again, for this video, the easiest way is just to do the stuff from the Big Tree Tech GitHub. So once that's downloaded, we'll just expand all, Here's the master. You can drill down until you get firmware and then wrap wrap firmware. And this is everything you need. The important part is you want firmware.bin in the main directory because the board is going to load that the second you put the SD card in and you power up. And then if you go into the sys folder, this duet Wi-Fi server.bin, we're going to need that. Now we do have to load that Wi-Fi module firmware manually with some commands but it's going to be pulling that firmware from this file to load onto that module. So, our SD card is mounted on our computer. I am just going to right click and format. I've done this previously. We'll format, make sure it's FAT32, hit start. We're good there. And then everything inside this RepRap folder we got from GitHub, we're just going to grab it all, copy, control C, and we'll put it on our SD card. Now you could go ahead and edit some files in here to try to get the Wi-Fi up and running, but you still have to flash that firmware. 
I think it's just as easy to do it with some terminal commands. So we'll do that after the fact. So we'll unmount our SD card and we'll go over to the board. So we'll dismount our SD card now that our Wi-Fi module is installed. Remember, you do have to use your PSU, I said that before, and we'll turn it on. You're gonna see the second blinking light. It flashes quite a few times. That means it's loading the firmware. You're gonna see an initial blue LED on your Wi-Fi module. And once RepRap is up and running, you'll have an intermittent blinking red LED right here. That means RepRap has been flashed successfully. But you can't get to it yet because we haven't set up our Wi-Fi module. I highly recommend that you use Yacht, yet another terminal when you're dealing with RepRap. You can use Pronterface, I've done it successfully many times, but it does actually transpose some of the characters differently. Yacht seems to work no matter what you punch in. But let's go ahead and go to Terminal, and we'll go to Settings. Now we only have COM9 available, that's another device on this PC. We haven't plugged in USB to the board yet. So now that the terminal's open, I'm going to go ahead and cable up USB. Our board's running. The firmware's already been flashed because we powered up with our SD card in. That's just the firmware on the board, not the Wi-Fi chip. And then if you go back to Yacht, you can do a recycle here. Then you're going to have more choices for your COM port. That's how you know which one your board's on. That's the easiest way to tell. So we'll go to COM5. We'll hit OK. Now you might not get any output right away. Go ahead and check this green arrow. Down here, it should say connected. Again, no output. Go ahead and do an M115. That's going to tell you what version of RepRap you're on, what type of board you're on. So we've definitely flashed RepRap successfully. So that's good. Now we need to figure out the Wi-Fi. You can use the M589 command to check on your Wi-Fi status or IP settings if you're connected with Ethernet to whatever board. If you do a M589, if it fails, or you see this weird error, another SPI transfer is pending, that usually means there's no firmware on the actual Wi-Fi chip. So we need to update that. And you saw earlier from the file structure, we have that Wi-Fi bin in our sys directory. So when we run these commands, it's gonna pull it directly from there. So let's just start that upgrade. We're gonna do an M997 space S1. It's gonna to try to connect up to that Wi-Fi chip it flashed it, and now it's uploading that bin file. So we're going to get some firmware loaded on there so we can interact with it. This takes just a couple of minutes. Once it's done, it's going to start that Wi-Fi module. It's going to throw an error because it doesn't know anything about your network, but we can take care of that next. So let's make sure we stop our Wi-Fi module. We're going to do an M552S0. So we know it stopped, it's idle. You can always do the M552 to check on it without any options. So idle, and then you can actually do the stop, S negative one. Now it is stopped. Now we can interact with it. So now we 100% know that it is stopped. We're ready to go ahead and set up the network config. I like to stop it just to make sure there's nothing crazy going on on the chip. Who knows what might happen during a firmware flash. I just like to go ahead and stop it. Now we can go ahead and set it back to idle. So M552. S0. It has been started. Now we can go ahead and set the password and the Wi-Fi setup. So we need the network name. So do an M587 and then do an S and in quotes your network name. BC wireless for me. Remember it is case sensitive. And then capital P in quotes your password. Again case sensitive. And hit enter. And if you have everything entered correctly, you can do an M552S1 to start that Wi-Fi module. And then after a couple of minutes, it should bring up an IP you can connect to. If you're communicating successfully, you should see the blue light blink a few times. And then here we have our IP. So you can just bring open a browser, 192.168.1.88. And there is the DWC for our SKR2. And you can see all the values are crazy on here. It's not set up, there's no config file, it's not even plugged into a printer. I just wanted to show you how to set up that Wi-Fi module and get RepRap up and running. Now you can do your install and do your configuration file based on your printer. Remember, your config file is over here in system, config.g. 
you can edit all this as custom as you want. I do have videos on that, how to do RepRap 3 and set up RepRap. We could go through this again if you all want to do that through another video. Just let me know in the comments. We are on version 3.1.10 plus 4 LPC from Team Gloomy. Just for reference. And that's all there is to it. This is actually a pretty short video for me, but I think this takes some of the mystery out of the Wi-Fi module and how you run RepRap on these boards. And this is a great way to try RepRap now that these boards will run multiple types of firmware. You might find that you like it better than the other ones. Also, you have a lot of work to do from here on out. This video was just to show you how to get the Wi-Fi up and running and RepRap. You do now have to do a configuration for your printer and get the board installed. But I have videos for that. I will leave a link to all of that in the description below, including all the stuff I used in this video. So again, hopefully this was helpful for some of you. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.